Greetings to you all, ladies and gentlemen. This is Luandile here, the leader and the instructor of Maniqua School. As we all know, Maniqua School is actually dedicated to teaching programming by means of problem solving. We don't teach programming by means of uh, going through the book's content, but we rather go through this textbook over here we try to solve each and every pro each and every problem in this textbook starting from chapter 1 up to the very end of chapter okay so right now the exercise that we actually working on is exercise 2.11 which is located on page 94 okay here's the ex here's the exercise So it's actually population projection. So we gotta rewrite programming exercise 1.11. It prompts the user to answer the number of years and displays the population after the number of years. Okay. So use the hint in exercise in programming exercise 1.11 for this program. The population should be cast into an integer. So here is a, sum, a sample run of the program. Okay, this is the sample run of the program. Okay, so now let's try to go to exercise 1.11 and see like what was the question. It's actually on page 54. So let's check it out. What is it they want us to do? Okay, the US Census Bureau project population based on the following assumption. Okay. One birth in every seven seconds, one death in every 13 seconds, one new immigrant in every 45 seconds, okay. So, we were actually asked to write a program to display the population for each of the next five years. Assume the current population is this number here, and one year has 35 days. So, hint, they also gave us a hint here. So, the hint is, in Java, if two integers perform division, the result the result is an integer. The fractional part is truncated. Okay, for example, 5 over 4 is 1, not 1.25. And 10 over 4 is 2, not 2.5. To get an accurate result with the fractional part, one of the values involved in the division must be a number with a decimal point. For example, 5.0. I mean, 5.0 over, over 4 is 1.25, and 10 over 4.0 is actually 2.5. Okay, so now let's get back to the original problem, which is actually on page 94. Okay. So basically, what, what's going to happen is we'll prompt the user to enter the number of years and then we simply pro and we simply display the number of uh, and we simply display the population size after that number of years it sounds pretty straightforward if you ask me so let's get on to our ide let me try to zoom in in case sample pool Let me start by creating a project first and simply go Java project. Let me call it exercise. Exercise, uh, let me call it 2.11. We pick a location. In case you didn't know, I've already created. 
a folder on my desktop so here's my desktop I created a folder inside it and I've called it textbook exercises if I'm not mistaken oh correct I called it textbook exercises inside that folder I've got a I've got another folder called Java and that's actually where I decided to put all of the exercises for chapter 2 which is elementary programming so what we did is what I did is, is to create a folder called exercise 2.11 so that's where I'll actually put my project then let's hit the hint the finish button okay with that out of the way now let's create our class and we will simply call this one here exercise 2.11a which simply says this is from student A's perspective as we all know each problem is solved in more than one way okay now we hit the public the public static board main method checkbox with that out of the way it is actually time to do the exercise oh another thing you guys i want you to know i want you to know okay i want you to know where you can actually finding this textbook we're actually using right so let me try to go right over here oh where is it where is that chapter two oh. chapter two oh actually that's not where i've put the location for this pdf because let me insert let me insert my uh, flash so that I can copy and paste the location for this textbook we're actually using because the problem is I could have of course I could have linked I could have put a link at the bottom since these uh, videos are on YouTube however I'm not yet qualified to do so so that's why I would really appreciate it if you guys help me out by subscribing on my channel that way I'll be eligible to do some of the things that I am not quite qualified for yet okay now let me try to check where did I put where did I put I'm gonna try to check where did I put oh there we go Java book website okay so here is the website over here let me copy and paste it copy and paste it I want to paste it at the bottom at the bottom I mean on top of our main method so there we go you can check it out so you can copy and paste this link here in order to get your own copy for this textbook otherwise you wouldn't be able to gain much out of this channel because you gotta be able to go through these examples on your own okay with that out of the way it, it is actually time to do the programming part okay so what we wanna have firstly this is what we want to have we'll simply 
declare some constant the very first story will simply be so we go public static final as we know we use the keyword final in case we have a constant we will simply call that constant seconds in a minute how many seconds do we have in a minute there's 60 of them what else we'll, ha we'll have a, a, a constant called minutes in we'll simply go minutes in in an hour how many minutes in how many minutes in an hour we'll also have 60 of them and then I go public static public static final ends initial population initial population which is actually this number here three one two zero three two four eight three one two zero three two four eight and lastly six okay so these are the these are our three constants and one might be curious why did we put them outside our main our main method no the reason is pretty straightforward we want to be able to access all of these constants on other methods too because as we all know this our main method is actually a method as the name suggests it's a main method so it's a method so you, as we, you guys as we as you guys know as you guys know uh, oh I'm so sorry we haven't covered methods yet so what we can do is like in this case we can of course we can put them inside this main method here or outside whichever one but we will gonna have we will be able to access all of them but you'll see at the very end of this tutorial we can do whatever we like so let's try to build the body of our method by simply creating a scanner going scanner and then system.in it simply says the reading from the keyboard because of course using a scanner you can read from something else such as a file but we're not yet but we're not there yet okay what we want to do is to simply prompt a user for now to enter enter the the number of years okay enter the number of years And we have got to keep that in our variable called number of and a variable called number of years. Number of years. Okay. So it's scanner dot next int. Okay. Once we do that, we simply go simply create a variable that will actually hold seconds in an hour so we'll simply go sec in hour of course we, we, we can make this a constant it's totally up to us how we're gonna go about doing that but 
for the sake of uh, this video, let's just make it a variable. Again, we do know that the number of seconds there are in an hour is actually equals to the number of seconds in a minute multiplied by the minutes, the number of minutes in an hour. So that is to say, we've got number of seconds in one minute and since you know there are 60 minutes in an hour so it's simply gonna be the product of these two right over here okay what else we then do we simply go we simply go create another variable I mean call it suck in which simply says the number of seconds in a day so we do know that a day is actually made up of 24 hours so we can simply say 24 multiplied by sec in age which simply says 24 multiplied by the number of seconds in an hour again we could have made this a constant however I am going to make it a variable sec in years the number of seconds I mean sec in year the number of seconds in a year right the number of seconds in a year would will simply be the number of how many days do we have in a year we were told it's 365 of course some some years are actually a leap year however they we were told to make an exam an assumption that a year is actually made up of i mean all years they are actually made up of 365 days not not uh, none of them is actually made up of 366 days as leap years are okay okay with that out of the way now let's get back to this okay we actually gotta go 365 days okay so each day is made up of sec in day seconds so this variable here will actually hold the number of seconds in one year again i keep repeating this part we could have made this i mean all these constants but i'm gonna leave them as variables okay so now we want to know the number of this is the only variable that like we cannot make constant okay so the number of seconds in years so that is actually determined by the number of years entered by a user so it's simply gonna be seconds sec in year multiplied by the number of seconds entered number of number of years entered by a user right okay this is the variable that cannot be changed into a constant okay what we then do now we gotta know the number of that number let me just go number of that number of that is simply equals to because we were told that after 13 seconds one person dies okay sec in years divided by 13 remember you guys 
we were told that if you divide an integer by an integer, your results will be an integer. So if you wanna also keep the fraction part, I mean, all the numbers after the decimal point, you might as well put, you have got to put maybe, you got, you've got to make one of uh, your values either your denominator or your numerator, you've got to make it a number with a decimal point. Okay, so in this case, we're simply going to make that same a number with a decimal point, and then we type cast, and then we cast the whole thing into an integer. Okay, what else? we got to know the number of... birds. So we were told that every seven seconds we would have would have uh, every seven seconds one okay one okay one person is born okay so what we're gonna have is simply sec in years. In this case, you folks, I would simply use a seven. And I would really love you, I mean, I would really like you to, to, to put, to put, uh, to tell me down below on the comments, why did I use seven and not 7.0, the same way we did for number of deaths, right? In this case, what I decided to do is to simply use 7, not 7.0. So, you let me know why did I decided to make this a decision. I'm actually using a 7 and not 7.0. And tell me, and also tell me if you think I'm missing something here or I'm getting it wrong. I would really love to hear your opinion, you guys. So we actually have number of im for number of immigrants. Okay, or oh, let's see, it's gonna be sec in years divided by 45. Again, why are we using 45 and not 40.0? Leave, uh, I mean, leave your, leave me a comment just to let me know why. Give me the reason why am I using 45 and not 40.0? Okay, now it is actually time to display our output, which is simply, which is simply the, popul the population in number of years is in 10 years let's just say so is so we have the population in number of years years is simply put our initial population plus this is what we keep put initial population popu population plus number of deaths number of deaths that we did num 
did num rock cats no we gotta subtract num rock cats you don't add people who died we subtract people who died okay so it's gonna be number of plus number of immigrant plus number of im plus num of beds okay now let's try to print out our output and see what we get let's just go three this is what we have let's see what did they put in this case what if we put a five let's see whether or not we could get the number they got So it's 3259, 32970. Oh, good. There's something a bit, a little bit incorrect about this program. And if you think you can figure it out, I would really love to hear that down below. You just put that on the, you just put your comment down below just to let me know what is it that you think I did wrong on this uh, solution here because we we do know that student A is actually a bit dumb in fact he is the dumbest out of the three students we have so let me know what might be a problem with this solution and what could possibly be the best solution what would be the best solution to take that out of the way okay that's pretty much it you guys it has been a long video don't forget to take this uh this uh website here that way you'll be able to get your own pdf thanks a lot you guys i would really appreciate it if you haven't subscribed yet to my channel do so that way I'll be qualified to do certain things on YouTube that I'm not yet qualified for. And you can put uh, a thumbs up, a uh, thumbs down, whichever that works for you, whichever that you think it is. I mean, you don't have to like it if you're wrong, if you think I messed up. That's pretty much it, you guys. See you on the next solution of this very same problem. Cheers, I'm gone.